This is a big fish by Curtis. It's really big. No, just kidding. So we're going to show you the fly that caught this fish and lots of others the other day. Okay, um, we fish still waters a lot. We don't fish scuds a lot, and we should. Um, this fly was responsible for so many fish um, the other day when we fished it. And one of the keys here is I, I think it doesn't have a tungsten bead, and we were fishing shallow water, so it kind of fell naturally. Anyway, we don't know what it is, but we're going to show you this fly. We're going to recreate it. It's called the garbage scud, and you'll see when we make the shell back for it. First things first, we got the trusty Fulling Mill Heavyweight Champ in the vise. So I'm going to take some 010 lead wire and make some snug wraps between 15 and 150, depending on how heavy you want it. So. I'm going to wrap it about to there, put my finger on it, and just kind of wiggle it. It'll break right off and kind of mash it together. Now to build up a little bit more of a scud hump, I'm going to come in here again with the same wire. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my wrap so I don't push it down into the other one quite yet. When I'm going to make a little bit more weight here, and then I'm going to put my finger here and pull, wiggle that off. And what that does is it puts, it wiggles the break off point down into the under layer of lead. So it's a pretty smooth lead body for uh, round lead purposes. So anyway, I'm gonna use brown thread with this. You can use like a brighter colored thread. You can use almost any color thread you want, but it's basically only gonna show up at the head of the fly. So as you see, I, I kind of wrapped over the lead and I wrapped very gently. So I'm going to do like two gentle coats of thread over it. You don't need to coat the whole thing with thread. And I'll just trim it off. So that's our scud underbody. To make it easier to work with on the down on the curve, I'm going to put the hook down on my in my vise a little bit. Totally unnecessary, but I find that it helps. I'm going to take a piece of brassy sized wire, copper wire, and I'm going to tie that starting where the lead left off, if I could do it, and I'm going to put it on the far side of the hook. And that's important because when I start to wrap it, I'm going to wrap it down like this and it, it will make a cleaner wrap. All right, so. We're gonna make the body, or the, we're gonna make the scud back for this. Now, um, we, I, I frankly didn't wanna look for my scud back in my fly tying supplies. So I had a plastic bag on my desk and I tied the first few just with regular plastic bag and then it turned into something crazy. Okay, so for the body or the scud back on this fly, we've got this bag that I bought for 20 bucks. It's gotta be this bag. No, just kidding. Really though, um, Hairline sells this cutting kit. It's got a little cutting pad. It's got a knife, a file, which I've sharpened scissors with, and some wire cutters. Um, but critical to this fly, is this thicker cellophane type plastic and I just kind of lucked out because this cutting board with tool set actually had this type of plastic. So this is what I'm using to make the scud back on this. Okay, so the key here is to find plastic that's like this and not like this. It's gotta be the stiffer like cellophane, cellophane type plastic. So I've just harvested this nice piece of plastic here and I've got my little measurement tool. Okay, so for a size 12 fulling mill heavyweight champ, which I'm gonna tie this on, I want it to be roughly six millimeters um, thick. So I'm gonna take my straight edge and I hold it right on one of these lines and I'm going to go about six millimeters over with my plastic. 
come up here and measure that too. This is probably way more work than you really need to do, but if you want to get exact, this is a really good way to do it. And then use your same straight edge and come over here and just cut it. All right, so now we have a piece of plastic here. And this is the one, this is the part that's kind of hard to explain, but I was tying some of these scuds just using this as the scud back, and then I pulled a little bit too tight on it, and the plastic did this. So you can see that it, it pulls apart, um, and then once, once it stretches, it's really super durable. It's not gonna stretch anymore, and it kind of turns milky. So it was also a very minimal tie-in point if I tied with this as the scud back. So from there, what I started to do is now I'm going to kind of hold that narrow to my fingers and I'm gonna pull that out in little jerks. And what that does is it adds, let me start that again. It adds little tiny segments in the plastic, kind of like a scud has. So if you can see that, if you pull out the plastic, it's all gonna look like this with like little natural looking curved shapes in it. So um, for whatever reason, just this, no flash on this scud seemed to really work well. But you can see, you know, one little plastic bag is gonna make miles of this stuff. So anyway, that's why we call this the garbage scud. Okay, so you can see that this has those, as Curtis calls them, striations or little segments in the plastic, which kind of is a cool little feature of this garbage foam, as we're calling it. Um, but I'm going to take this forward and wrap that around the lead and I'm going to wrap it back to where my wire is tied in and as you can see it's a pretty narrow tie-in point and I just want to check to see when I pull that over it'll it'll be good it's a little thick but that's alright because we're going to put a bunch of dubbing on this so I'll put my hook back upright in the vise and now it's just like every other scud that's been tied all right, so I've got Arizona Mega Synthetic Dub. You can do this in a whole bunch of different colors, but this is not semi-seal. This is called Mega Synthetic. It's a little bit different consistency than semi-seal. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit finer. And I'm just gonna loosely dub that on my thread. Really no need to do a dubbing loop on this because it would spin it up too tight. So it's really kind of a messy dub job and that's how I want it. So there's the noodle. Probably way thicker than you would do like a normal nymph. But I'm just going to start wrapping it. And as you can see it kind of separates from the thread a little bit. And that's fine. So we're, except for right there. <laughs> we're going to twist that down a little. So All right, so we've got a really messy dubbed body. So I'm going to pull the scud back over and I'm going to put a loose turn of thread just over the top. And what that does is it makes it so that it, it doesn't fold too much at the head. Um, usually this little lip right here is folded up over on top of itself because you put too much pressure. So just a few wraps. I'm going to pull that a little bit tight and now I'm going to tighten it down and as you can see here there's minimal bulk at the head of the fly or if it's a scud at the tail. So I'm going to throw a couple half hitches in this because I don't want that to come undone as I'm wrapping my wire through. 
Now when you wrap your wire, if you come up through on this side, and I'll show you, if I show, pull up on this side, it's pushing those fibers onto the top of the fly. So with every wrap, I grab the fly and move those fibers down out of the way. Just so want to pull the fibers down. Just kind of evenly space out your wraps. Catch my wire and helicopter it off. And I'll just throw a whip finish in there, and that's all the tying we're doing. So you can see the, the legs are starting to poke out the bottom, but I've got this trusty little TMCO brush. A little hack to make this easier to grab off your desk is I take a 20 pound piece of monofilament, just tie a loop around it because I have big fat fingers. All right, so once I get up to here, coming in, you can see that plastic is super durable. Um, there's a little bit of brush that's hitting that. It's not going to tear or anything. Once I pick out a bunch of those legs, I'm just going to come here and trim those about, you know, point length. And for durability, I found that Solar as Bone Dry, of all the thin resins that are out there, Solar as Bone Dry is the best at sticking to a flat, non porous surface. So, as you can see, Trim down my brush from the solar as. I'm going to put a very thin coat over the top of this. And it's very faint, but you can still see that this uh, scud back is a little bit milky, a little bit buggy. But anyway, that's it, the garbage scud.